Hi, it's Jen, Jen DeTracy, and this is My Messy House, because MS is raw and real, real, so real, <laughs> and this is episode number 12. So here we are, and we're talking about My Messy House. Uh, messy house being the messiness on the top floor of our brain, <laughs> you know, the messiness that comes with living with MS, which can be, is real and very raw in our lives. And as you already know, if you're following this series that I live with heaps of MS and that is, or heaps of uh, fatigue, I should say, heaps of MS. <laughs> That's funny. Well, there's probably heaps of that too. However, one of the things I actually, this just came to me, so I'm gonna roll with it. And it, it's, it's sort of, um, I'm going to get on my soapbox for just like a moment and then I'll step back off again. So when I first went to the MS support groups that were available, there was one in particular that I was going to. It was the 40 under 40 and I was over 40, but I was able to pull it off because, you know, I look so young. <laughs> Maybe not, but anyhow. Um, and it was interesting, right? First of all, I... I, when I attended at first, I was nervous. Then I was grateful to get information because I had put it off, put it off, put it off. And then I noticed dynamics within the group. The facilitator was giving people more time to speak. And uh, there were people in the group that were dominating. And then there was clicks in the group, group and it was very interesting. And one of the things of why I didn't uh, feel that I fit in, which is not uncommon in my life, even long before living with MS or being identified as an MSer, um, was just feeling different. And because at that time I, I was, um, and I'm not everybody in the group felt this way, so I just wanna be clear about that, was there was one person in the group who was very passionate and expressed that they would always be angry, always be angry about living uh, with MS. And I thought, wow, like I was very early on in my diagnosis at that point, I'd say, gosh, I don't even know, maybe six months out or something, maybe longer. It took me a long time to be willing to go to an MS support group because I was afraid that if I perpetuated the idea of living with MS that I would be automatically become severely disabled, just like the snap of the finger, I was terrified. So, um, you know, I, I didn't read about MS. I, I wanted nothing to do with it until I couldn't get out of bed one day. So big wake up call for me. And there was, I'm sure there was a time in the beginning where I felt extremely angry. Uh, denial was the big, you know, the big D for me really was, was denial. But to hear, uh, and I don't know how old, how long this woman had been living with MS, and I know it's frustrating, especially, um, you know, the fact that I can't put my shoes, myself in the shoes of this woman, and the fact that her hands were becoming more numb, and so other symptoms were increasing. And she said, I'm always going to feel angry. And um, I felt a really deep sadness around that, because... I thought, wow, that's like, that's a messy house. That's a lot to carry around. It's like, I imagine, you know, the weight on somebody's back, dragging that around every single day. Uh, it's just uh, tragic, really. And maybe you're in that place right now. Maybe you're not. Maybe you've moved through that. Maybe you have angry days and ang days that aren't angry. I can't say that I'm never angry or frustrated about living with MS, certainly. But I decided to take off that coat, that angry coat, a long time ago. And at the, you know, I'll be, it, it's almost nine years since I was diagnosed with MS. So I've had a lot of time, I've had a lot of bandwidth to play in the domain of living with MS and recognizing that that is what I call a piece of my life, not my whole life. It's not who I am, but it's a piece of me and a piece of my system. So I think that when we, again, uh, feel that constant anger, it's um, somewhat what I talked about earlier, 
um, in, a, in another episode of which I'd have to look at which one it is because I can't remember in this moment. Uh, but embracing those feelings because as you move towards those feelings, that self-empathy of moving towards the anger and allowing it to be there, to welcome it in, not to push it away, but to welcome it in, that it, it becomes uh, less big. It, it actually dissolves over time. And also it's a choice. And you might say, well, it's not a choice for me. Well, yeah, I have to say it's still a choice. It is a choice how we uh, operate in the world and, and what we feel. Um, feelings never last for very long. Um, a feeling can come and be with us and it may be heavy. But the fact is, even if we don't acknowledge it, you know, we our brain moves to another thought like, oh, I'm hungry now or, oh, I need to, to go to the bathroom or, oh, I better call so-and-so or um, that book I'm reading is really good or ha -ha, laughing about something in a TV show. So our brain is constantly changing. We're, we're never stuck in one feeling constantly, nonstop. We might come back to it over and over and over and over again throughout the day, but it's not with us. 24 seven. So recognizing that can be a powerful realization, uh, inviting that anger to be there or that feeling to be there. Yeah. I, I feel angry right now and just welcome anger and, and recognizing where's that anger? Where am I feeling that anger in my body? Oh, it's in the pit of my stomach or, Oh, it's, it's in my throat. It's really locked in there. And recognizing that can, can actually create a significant shift. And the reality is that we have a choice. We can live now in our life or we can wait. We can wait for the cure. We can wait for the anger to dissolve. We can wait, we can wait, we can wait. But you know, honestly, that feels really messy. You know, <laughs> that feels really uh, uncomfortable, horrible. Uh, why wait? Why wait to live? Right? When we can allow ourselves to acknowledge our feelings and be present with them and feel them in our body and know that, you, that that thought is going to change to some other thought because our brain can't stay on one thought forever. It might come back to it. And when we can release that even temporarily for one second and have relief from it and live now in the present uh, with whatever is going on for us, it actually makes life easier. Not to say it's an easy thing to do, but when you can do that, it's fantastic. Do I do it all the time? Hell no, I don't because I'm not con I'm not that conscious to be doing that all the time, but I am working towards becoming more conscious so that I can have this more even, even keel. So share your, share your experience of a thought that was there and went away. Let me know how it goes with acknowledging those thoughts, uh, feelings, welcome them in and your opinion on this concept of waiting for the cure that we don't know when it's going to come. So why wait? Why not live now? And in the next video, I'm going to talk more about living, living now. All right. So again, this is Jen DeTracy and my messy house because M house, M house, <laughs> M S is raw and real. See you soon.